Well, howdy, peeps. Welcome back. Hope everyone's doing well today. It's uh, solstice. Happy winter solstice. I always have to make a video on the day of the solstice, and uh, I'm sure you all are well aware more or less of what solstice is, but just in case, if there's anyone out there who's quite unsure of how it works, the solstice is the longest night and by virtue the shortest day, I guess, uh, of the year. And it happens usually on the 21st or 22nd. This morning it was at 7, I think, 7.50, like, Pacific time or something. They have a specific time of the day, but the bigger picture is that the solstice is the time when the sun is furthest down in the sky, that you will have the shortest day, and the, at the same time that makes it the first day of winter, which from here on out the sun will gradually get higher in the sky. So... The longest night was always celebrated by ancient cultures. It was the rebirth. This is where the story of, you know, Jesus came from. I know a lot of people would completely disagree with that, but um, the story of Jesus goes far back before Jesus. There were plenty of stories of virgin births with three kings, and the metaphors are thick on that one, and I don't want to get into that on the holiday season. But let's just say that um, every solstice, this time of year, I celebrate the seasons, I try to remember the things that I may have failed at in the past year, the things that I've enjoyed in the last year, and usually it's kind of a celebration people do on, say, New Year's and New Year's Day, which that's part of it too. But, you know, deeper than that, Solstice gives me time to realize, oh shit, it's four days to Christmas and I don't have anything you know, ready. I haven't really bought anything, and uh, I'm I'm really bad about gifts. So I've always I always reflect on my poor nature of being able to buy stuff. Not because I don't want to, but just because I uh, don't know what to buy people. Uh, it's it's difficult. But uh, I I was thinking about that earlier, and I thought, oh boy, that's a isn't that a first world problem? Not knowing what to buy. You know, I mean, in in my first world sense, not. Every, there are a lot of people in America who cannot buy a anything for their kids. The people who this this time of year are suffering, the people who are really really struggling, and <clears throat> the beauty of this is that this time of year also a lot of people get together to help others. They get together to start charities, to uh, to bring toys to people. The Secret Santas. It's it's a beautiful thing to behold, and it ties into what I was saying the other day about human nature. They, We want to help each other. And when there's, say, a minor disaster, like I said, people always come together. But in longer-term disasters, I said that, uh, you know, people might tend to divide more. But I've been rethinking, kind of, I've been rethinking this. Uh, you know, human nature is to want to be together to want to bond, to connect with others, and to trust each other, and to be able to console in one another. Whether or not we nurture that emotional need is up to us. And while some people will say they don't need any connections to others, any, you know, that they can just do it all on their own, you know, well, no man is an island, and it's times of year, you know, like the holidays, where I have to sit and say, I'm this is what I'm grateful for, and really lay it all out there. There's a lot going on in the external world that I could be complaining about, but I don't want to taint my experience, the enjoyable parts of my life, by things that are out of my control. Um, I will talk about them on YouTube, and I'll bring them up in conversations, but I never let things consume me. For me, it's you know, as a philosopher, I like to think about things. I I have every right, I guess, to call myself that, because all it means is a lover of knowledge or a lover of wisdom, and that's exactly what I, that's my thing. You know, whether or not it pays off or there's any benefit to it uh, remains to be seen. But let's just say that I, I care deeply about finding out interesting things about the world and why people think the way they do and, and what kind of beliefs people have. And... Uh, I find myself just kind of understanding the hermit mentality, you know, being isolated, but at the same time being tied to strong communities and wanting to be part of a, like move to a small town, somewhere where I can really interact with people 
and talk to my neighbors. I don't want to live in the city my whole life. Of course not. I don't. I live in the kind of the suburbs, but still. Not the suburbs. It's like the first edition. I live in Vancouver, Washington, across from Portland. But uh, at any rate, it, it, as I mentioned before, we've talked about moving to somewhere else like Kentucky just because the land's cheap and I can get a lot. It's part of the reason to move there. A lot of people would say, oh, well, the people, you know, uh, they're very, you know, like say resistant to strangers. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. You know, you kind of have to be these days. I'm the same way. Fortunately, I know how to talk to people. You know, I don't care what your political affiliation or your religion is. I am completely open to discussion with any rational human being um, because I've never been able to determine a person's conversational value or their insight or input into my life based on what they believe or don't believe. It, it just doesn't work that way. I've heard people try to classify all of one group as dumb. And when I was younger, I did that too. <clears throat> I was like, oh, all Christians must just be morons, brainwashed. No, it's much deeper than that. I didn't understand. Um, and I felt the same way about, say, conservatives or anybody from a, a viewpoint that I didn't understand. I've been open to it, but at any rate, as you get older, you start to understand viewpoints come from different experiences and different needs of different people. And your needs might change over your lifetime to where you'd prefer to live in a place where it's a small town and people are resistant to outsiders. You know, we learn a lot and we grow up. So every year around this time, we have time to reflect on who we are, what we want out of life. And when I say that, I don't mean, you know, you're going to get what you want out of life. Uh, but I, I could paraphrase basically one of my favorite philosophies, which is you, you're already wealthy. You just have to change your, your value of what you think you need. Rather, God, how does that go? Something like, you know, the only thing that can change your your wealth and your feelings about life is your own thinking, your own brain. I don't know how to put it any more succinctly than that. You need your brain to do thoughts to make you happy. And uh, you have to go through experiences. You have to learn how to take adversity when it comes. You have to be able to, to shrug off bullshit. You have to be able to, like... Learn to argue without taking things personal and just being able to laugh it off and walk away from it and not stew in anger. I know the feeling of getting really angry at someone for something they've done. And believe me, if a person crossed a certain line, um, I'd still feel that way. But that's a much farther back line than it used to be. In other words, you can call me names or insult my, you know, who I am or make fun of me all you want. I just like I've heard it so many times in my life. I was picked on when I was younger in school. And then I, when I started YouTube, I started getting these trolls that were always harassing me. And I said, why do I care? You know, why do I give a shit? I only care about those I love. And there's the only opinions that really, really matter uh, other than my close peers, you know, uh, or people within groups that I do respect. But at any rate, none of it matters. <laughs> you know, none of it really matters. We learn as we go that the most important things really are those connections we have with others and those special moments. Think back to the greatest moments you've had in your life. I think some people will remember isolated moments, but most people, I believe, will think back to times when they were camping with family and friends or at an event with family and friends or, you know, going to an event where there's people or hanging out with a small group of people. Those moments stick out because we really do have a connection that is beyond this fleshy body. And whatever you want to call that, you know, uh, this, but we, we have an underlying connection. And when we're close together, uh, we know that our brains emit waves. It's been detected. So when you're close to other people, it's not too far of a stretch to imagine that you really can share thoughts and ideas, and that's why being face-to-face -face really is more productive when you're trying to have a relationship, let's say, you know. That's why long-distance relationships are, are hard, even if you can see each other. It's like, it's different. Being close 
puts you in proximity to someone's feelings as well as their body. But, um, and not to get too woo on it, but I do have some feelings about the universe and the connections we have. And I think that's why over the years I've been able to kind of let go of really trying to attach myself to any one idea. Or I, I've never, I guess the only thing I've ever really pursued was like philosophy and a little bit of mysticism in the belief that there really was something called enlightenment. And then I understood it was an onion where you peel away the layers and there's really nothing there. That you're enlightened when you live enlightened. You're not going to achieve a... I've always said, you know, for those who believe that going into the mountains and meditating as a monk is the ultimate, um, the ultimate lifestyle, for example, I would say that works for some, but not for all. Because who's going to have those baby monks? It takes many different types of brains to have different roles in this world. And the other day I woke up and I was in the shower early in the morning and I just had this kind of, it came to me as trees. I was thinking all the different trees in the forest and how they connect with one another. And if you remove a certain species, perhaps a pest moves in or a disease. And you you can't just grow monoculture without, say, human inter intervention. It just fails. Um Trees want to grow in different groups because they occupy different spaces and they're all necessary in the same way that all humans are necessary. Whether you're religious or not religious, whether you're political or not political. There was a time in my life where I believed that there may be some kind of a possible utopia, right? Where everyone <clears throat> at least shared the same values. I would never want everyone to be the same, walking around in suits. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, I, I want to see a world where people are just able to be so... Con I guess, in control of their lives enough to not have to worry about everyone else's life. Because there are so many people out there telling others how to live. And um, they don't see any end in sight. Uh, but maybe that's part of human nature too. You know, we want others to think like we do. But I'm rambling at this point, and that's what I'm good at. So I'm going to let leave this one off. Um, I'll be doing another video shortly. I just wanted to say happy solstice. We can all make good changes in our lives. We can all love one another. We can all connect on some sort of a, a level that we can relate on. There's got to be something out there that all people, no matter who they are, can find common ground on. Don't worry about the ones who are always looking to divide or to troll or harass. There's people who are lonely and have their own issues. There's people who have been wronged or beaten or abused in their own lives, so they abuse others. There's a long list of issues out there that is out there. Just don't bring it into your own life. Sometimes you got to, but, you know, just flutter it away. And uh, enjoy your holidays. And I'll talk to you all next time. Be well.